And welcome to episode six of Illustrator for Noobs. And today we're going to look at gradients. Um, let's just have a look first of all. You see the previous, the example that I made. Um, we've got to make one, two, three, four copies of the cogs with the, with the center. Sorry, excuse me. And two of these um, ones without the center in different kinds of gradients. So let's go back to our layer um, make sure it is selected because otherwise it won't let you do anything on there um, with this one let's just go through when you go to the swatches palette there's a bit down at the bottom which is your swatch libraries if you click on that the drop down comes so I mean in my case I've got quite a lot of um, I've got quite a lot of swatches because I've collected them through the years but what you were going to focus on today is gradients and it already comes with quite a large selection of um, gradient palettes or whatever you want to call it that come as default so that's really handy because you can use it as a base and then alter it as you want which is what we're going to be doing today so we've selected that the fill is above and um, I'm going to give it you can see some of these colors are they'll be really lurid really lurid i don't i'm sure there's applications for them but we're going to go for the orange yellow one. Ow! oh no do you remember when we did the um pathfinder i forgot to take these middle bits out so just hold shift click them all delete them here we go that's better right so we're with a gradient now that goes from yellow to a sort of orangey red so it goes across this way um, I prefer to make it sort of slightly more diagonal so how you can do that is by um, going over to here which is the gradient tool here or G um, click on that and then you just basically go I want it across like that and that's made it go from the starting point to the end is always from left to right so it's got the yellow to the orange um, and it's going across that way so every copy that we make after that the gradient will go in the same direction which is very handy um, you can see that they've spaced out the gradients in different ways you can always alter them um, and move them around if you want to because it can change and you can get really really um, well, I do anyway, um, get really caught up in the minutiae of, oh, if I move that over there, what happens? And if I move it back over here, there are really subtle changes. Plus, you can add new ones if you want. You can see there's a little plus sign next to the arrow there and you can just add gradients if you want to or just rip them out. Um, this one's quite nice as it is, so we'll stick to that. So when we did the pathfinder we lost all the strokes um, so what we're going to do is go and add the strokes again so make sure that the stroke is above the fill here and we're going to go to our swatches I'm probably going to give it that sort of orangey yellow I mean we can make our own colors but I'll just use the default ones because they're suitable for now um, I'll probably make them a two pixels wide so it stands out and not forget to add the round corners um, so let's have a look so that's what it looks like so far so you can see it's kind of interesting when you've got gradients it looks like there's a gradient on the stroke because of the way that the color combines with each end I mean you can actually put gradients on the stroke as well itself which is in later versions of Illustrator you can do that um, but for now this suits us fine next to make another copy so alt make a duplicate and with this one we're going to go for something a bit more orangey so we'll just sort of um, oh, that's quite nice actually we'll pick that one but just make sure that it's the fill that's above we'll go for this one um, again I prefer to have it the other way around one thing that's really handy is that you can either use the gradient tool over here and then drag whichever way you want but you can go down here to this handy little button and reverse the gradient so now the red the darker red is on this side and the 
lighter orange is on this side but I don't actually think that I think that red's a bit too red so I can go and edit that as it is from what we've got here so double click on that you end up with a slider or you can choose the swatches but in this case we're going to be using um, the sliders and I just want to make this side slightly more orangey rather than red so I'll just scoot it along a little bit that's a bit better and I think up here I'm going to make this a bit more yellow there that's nicer so there we've got our second cog so two more to go I'm going to do one that's more sort of yellowy um, I think I spotted one earlier yes that one and we'll probably end up making this side a tad more orange so just scoot it across there yep and then on this side um, let's just quickly go back to this one because the top of the name is a, has a bit of white in it I like to kind of have things where they balance out and so that the whole thing doesn't go flat so it really gives it a bit more pop I've put a slight white on the corner there so we'll go back to this one here over on this way um, I could turn that one white but the other thing I could do is slide it across put another um, um, whatever marker thing color thing in it and then just give it a bit more oh I forgot to select it silly me <laughs> scoot it across add another color and make it a little bit more white there that's better um, so right we've got one two three we need one more and we'll probably go for one that's sort of in the middle um, let's see what that's like that's not bad I'm going to make that maybe a bit more orangey that way there that's nice so here we have a selection of different ones I might actually give this an orange stroke a bit more orangey there just to give it something different so these are these cogs ready um, I'm just going to actually make them a bit smaller so they're not in the way and besides we'll need to when we um, start to arrange them so I'm just going to push them over to the side and then we'll work on this one um, again we're going to put a stroke oh it already has one interesting then make it two and it already had the rounded corners so that's fine for that one um, what I do want to do though is to make that a bit darker and then we'll work on the fill um, maybe go on this one that was originally there you can click on it and it'll make it like that and then go again from reverse it so that the yellow is over there um, but what I will do is maybe make that one a bit more orangey slide it across not too much something like that um, and it's going across that way so I want to make sure that it's going diagonally there we have our first one and then we move over to the next one and we're going to make that pretty similar but I think what I'll do is I'll make the stroke a different color and possibly alter the outside edge and make it a bit more red yep so here we have a set of gradients for our cogs um, we do want to also let's just go back to this if you look at this I'm just going to twirl it open so you can have a look it's got quite a few bits to it um, if I just unpadlock it I just want to show you that I have put in a blur as well so I can just take off all the eyes but what I can do is also you can just click and then drag and then they disappear 
if you want to do a whole load of them. You can see here I've put in um I've put in a um a blah 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 a, a blur. Um a Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur, depending on what whichever way you pronounce it. I say Gaussian blur. It's already got the um the gradient that I'd chosen, which is the one that's called analogous five, and I think it's further along in the gradients palette. Um Let's just close this again and bring this one back up again. Whoops. What am I doing? There we go. Um, so we want to basically create a circle. Something like that. It already is in the... Oh, no, it wasn't. We'll go on to analogous 5 as the gradient, but I want to get rid of the stroke can just click on the square with the line across it so it means there's no stroke to it. To give it a blur you go to effect all the way down to blur, Gaussian blur. With the preview you'll be able to see that it just gives it a bit of a blur, the radius of it, it just gets bigger and bigger as you go along but you see when you go too far to the end it starts to go a bit square which isn't very attractive. So something along the 60 roughly is fine. So we'll do that and I'll be able to show you that it actually looks quite nice. 400 by 400 rectangle. It did choose the previous color that we um, selected before. I'm going to make it. What am I doing? That's the stroke. There we go and get rid of the stroke there. OK, and then what I'll do is I shall drag it below everything else and it stands out. You can see it now and it's here and we can just move it into place and we'll be arranging all of these in the next episode and also talking about lovely lovely drop shadows. Um, so until then Thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, please pop them in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye. Peace and love.